This ESPN production is available on ESPN HD, presented by Olivia. On the campus of the University of Pittsburgh at the Peterson Event Center, one of the great spectacles in all of college basketball, the Oakland Zoo. Oh! Tonight, they welcome the Georgetown Hoyas and big man Roy Hibbert. Watch out, the Big East preseason player of the year has a new weapon in his arsenal. Shot clock down to three. Here's Hibbert. Yes! A three-pointer! You gotta be kidding me! Number three, Kansas playing later on ESPN, but first, sick Greg Georgetown invades the Peterson Event Center in Pittsburgh to face the 16th rated Panthers in a Big East showdown. The Hoy is the only remaining undefeated team in Big East Conference play at 3-0. Hi, everybody, alongside Bill Raftery, Jay Billis, I'm Dave Fast. Just so you know, McDonough gave me his game check, so I won't be responding to the negative comments on YouTube. All right, Jay, Pittsburgh playing very well, despite the fact that Mike Cook is out for the year, LeVance Field's out probably until the end of February. You know, it's really one of the great stories of college basketball, how Pittsburgh has responded to this, to this adversity. They've adapted to it. They're overcoming it. They've had some production from unexpected places, and Jamie Dixon has said, we'll be fine. We need to concentrate on what we have. They've done a great job. Georgetown only one loss, Bill. That was at Memphis. Well, good teams have to overcome obstacles that we certainly may have to tonight. Uh, but the big obstacle, Roy Hibbert, how about him? Did you ever make a three? Were you ever permitted to make a three? We didn't have a three-point line. I have an excuse. Uh, you're almost <laughs> my age. But the big thing, I think, is how they play them. Him, Pitt. Are they going to move him around? Are they going to double him? All those things will be fun to watch tonight. He's a very talented, low-post performer. Let's take a look at our star watch featuring Roy Hibbert. And for Pittsburgh, their double-double man, Dewan Blair. Well, Hibbert is so efficient. His numbers aren't up from last year. It's just just the way that he gets them. A very mature player that can back you in and score at a 60% clip from the field. And the country's going to know a lot about Dewan Blair. A talented performer. Terrific game against Seton Hall. Can move around. Can be tough around the rim. and can block some shots. And tonight's starting lineups are brought to you by Volvo for the visiting Georgetown Hoyas, a record of 13 and 1. It'll be Sapp, the freshman Freeman, along with Wallace, the all time leader in threes at Georgetown. Summers and Roy Hibbert in the front court. Hibbert coming off that game winning shot against Connecticut. And for Pittsburgh at 14 and 2, down two starters. But the guys filling in are playing pretty well. Keith Benjamin averaging 17 points per game without Cook and Field. Joined by Ramon and Brown in the backcourt. And up front, Sam Young playing his best basketball, coming off a career high 28 points against Seton Hall. He's joined by DeJuan Blair, who's averaging 13 rebounds, 15 points per game since conference play began. And Pittsburgh will start with the basketball. Ronald Ramon will run, run the point. They pitch Jay Willis. The Lions go, Henry. And it'll be Wallace guarding Ramon. Here's Blair on Hibbert. And Blair able to score over the seven footer. Well, Blair may be only six foot eight inches tall, but he's got a reach of seven three. That puts him pretty equal to Roy Hibbert inside. How about the shoulders, too? It will attack the numbers, Jay. Well, both Hibbert and Blair can back you in. You might have to run another defender at each one of them. Summers and Young, a great matchup. Two talented guys. Shot clock inside of 10. Here's Wallace. It was just one of seven from three the other day in Georgetown's last game against Connecticut. Pittsburgh has won 12 in a row here at home. Coming into tonight's game. Three won't go. Tap no by Blair. Kept it alive though in Pittsburgh with the fresh 35. John Thompson was saying he, they've got to work on their rebounding. There's only give those second chances. Well, they're such a great defensive team. They're holding opponents to 32% shooting. That means a lot of missed shots. And Georgetown only out rebounding opponents by three per game. They do have to get on the glass. That means the guards as well. Three won't go for Summers, who shoots 38% from out there. And now Ramon up the floor. Brown off the dribble. 
And Hibbert, who averages six and a half rebounds per game, pulls it down for Georgetown. I know you can relate to this. Once in a while, Georgetown forgets about Hibbert. He'll yeah. take some shots. I know that may have happened to you once or twice in your career. <laughs> that was in the scouting report. They were told to forget about the inside. Uh, uh, uh. Sap on the drive, no. And Blair boards. Well, Jesse Sapp is one of the toughest players in the country and usually goes in harder than that when he drives. From the corner of the three for Keith Benjamin, who's shooting over 60% since Vicky's play began behind the arc. He plays so confidently. I mean, he's had a heck of a career as a sub. I mean, he comes in and does his job. Now he's taking advantage of the minutes. You know, what's interesting is sometimes players need to be needed and Keith Benjamin is one of those guys that's always done what's been asked of him, and now he's becoming a star. How smart is that, huh? Poise under the tent. That's what lifting the big does on occasion. Wide open. Anytime you overplay Georgetown, they are going to go backdoor. But I think Pittsburgh would rather get backdoored a couple of times than give up open threes. See if Georgetown can beat you with twos rather than from that three-point line where they're very proficient. Jonathan Wallace with Georgetown's first point. And Hibbert, nice hands, but it ends up in the arms of Ramon, and he cans a triple. It's 8-2 to two pick. What a shame, huh? Pretty good defense negated. Well, you can't give open looks to that guy, Ronald. Well, and Ronald Ramon taking over at the point the last four games. 28 assists, only 10 turnovers. You can go near 3-1. to one. That's pretty impressive. Coming off a 14-point, eight-assist effort and a win over Seton Hall. There's that back screen to get the big guy down, a little baby hook, and a good not call. That was pretty, a little on big screen, and Juan Blair with the flop. But Roy Hibbert's so efficient inside, he's got a right-hand hook, left-hand hook, and he takes his time. That's why I think you need to run a second defender at him when he's got the ball in the post. And Jay's got great footwork, too, with the dribble. He knows how to spin. Here's Blair with a spin, but he traveled. A turnover by Pittsburgh, and it's the first of the game. And you have to give a lot of credit there to Jesse Sapp for coming over from the weak side to double. John Thompson, 4-1 and one against Pittsburgh, including a win in the Big East tournament, which at the time was Jamie Dixon's worst loss in his tenure as the head coach at Pitt, a 65-42 win in the championship game in New York last year. How about these two coaches? What starts on their careers, huh? Nice pass. Hibbert can't score, though. And then poked out of there by Gilbert Brown, and here's Blair. But Pittsburgh very fortunate there. Gilbert Brown did not rotate over when Blair stepped out on that ball screen. Boy, great reaction defensively. Good ball movement as well. And Ramon will settle things down. Moving over from the shooting guard spot to the point. Replacing LeVance Fields, who they expect back at the end of February now. Earlier they thought it might be come tournament time, but they should get him back for a couple of games at the end of the regular season. Pitt does a nice job on a ball screen to an empty side. Very tough to cover on that baseline jumper. Anytime a Georgetown player dribbles at you, they're going to go back door, come off for a handoff. Oftentimes it's going to be back door. Austin Freeman, freshman, not able to hit the three. And Freeman has been about as efficient as any freshman in the Big East, shooting over 60%. Georgetown's got three players on their roster shooting 60% or better. That's amazing. And he shoots 46 from three. That's pretty talented. Here's Benjamin off the dribble. Too strong. Well, that's not like Pittsburgh to take a shot with no passes. Yeah, they got to control the game. That's their feeling. Even though Benjamin can make that shot, that's a bad shot in that situation. Can always get it a little later. But Hibbert wide open. Somebody's got to rotate over faster. Uh, pretty good look by Sapp and heat on it as well. They needed to get that in there early because mm -hmm. after that ball screen, they are slow rotating off the blitz. Hibbert knocks it out of bounds. It will stay Pittsburgh basketball. Two of the best teams in the Big East coming into the season and two of the best big men in the Big East Conference. Roy Hibbert for Georgetown and Dewan Blair for Pittsburgh. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Bud Light. Endless refreshment from start to finish. Bud Light keeps it coming. And in part by Volvo, who believes that life is better lived together. Volvo for life. Back at the Peterson Event Center where Pittsburgh has lost only eight times in six years. And right now leading Georgetown early, eight to four. 
The Panthers have won two in a row since suffering a one point loss to Villanova. And they're in their fifth game without Mike Cook, who's out for the season with an ACL. And LeVance Fields, who the Panther officials think should return at the end of February after fracturing his left foot and that loss at Dayton. Uh, you're losing 22 points, his leadership in the backcourt, and yet they've been able to step up. It just shows not only the depth of, of quality players that Jamie Dixon has on his bench, but the resolve this team has. I mean, you know, the first thing after the initial shock of losing Levance Fields and Mike Cook that Jamie Dixon said to his staff was, we'll be fine. Let, mm -hmm. Let's pick it up and let's go. And that positive outlook of, of we're going to do, we're going to win with what we have. We've got good players. We're going to win with them. And he felt Benjamin was coming along, too, and more deserving of minutes, and Biggs has played well. People stepping up. Well, Sam Young might be the most improved player, at least a candidate for it early on. Right in the Big East, I think he is the most improved player. A little 2-3, and you give him an open look. It's dangerous. The middle of this zone, Jay, I know you've watched it, too, is wide open because Hibbert has to come up. and be interested to see if they're going to flash and then find on the wing. Yeah, you can flash, look opposite. I also think that short corner is a great place to put the ball, and you can get, the, get somebody diving to the rim. Where they spread you with this offense. Here's the ball screen. They've gotten Hibbert a couple times on the roll, but a better rotation there by Sam Young coming over to pick up Hibbert. And that's one of the changes now. Early on, you spotted that they weren't doing that. That's the first add-on. Yeah, an adjustment they made during the timeout. Hibbert has two. Wallace has two for Georgetown. Benjamin and Ramon each with a three. And Blair with two for Pittsburgh. And one of the great things about having Hibbert in the game, he's such a Ooh. great passer. And a foul on Brown. That's the first foul in the game as he trips up Freeman. There aren't many big guys across the country that you can put the ball in their hands at the high post and trust them as you would a, a guard to deliver the ball. And Hibbert's one of those big guys. But he's done it for so long. Look at his little cut. Oh, and back pan. oh what a great look. But there's your guy. Anytime they dribble at you, they are going back door, and it is so difficult to stop. And off of one hand as well. But again, you would rather give up that two and continue to pressure then play soft on the uh, perimeter and give up multiple threes. So Wallace with four for Georgetown. The foul was actually on Young before the basket. Now Wanamaker, freshman from Philadelphia, couldn't hit the three, but they get another opportunity here as Gilbert Brown tracks down the loose ball. Well, Wanamaker, if he followed his shot, would have had that, but Gilbert Brown very alert. Brown, a redshirt freshman, playing or starting for the sixth time this season. He can get to the rim, handles it pretty good. Here's a nice double. Young finds Wanamaker on the baseline, ran into Wallace, but they're going to call Wallace for the foul. And he's shaking up first Georgetown foul. Yeah, this is a little play that you mentioned, Jay. You make the move to him, and of course that ability. And how about the one-handed pass now? Isn't that gorgeous? They didn't even use the post rub. Yeah, they throw it right at your feet, and it's very difficult to stop. Get vision. I, yeah, I think that Jonathan Wallace is the best pure cutter on this Georgetown team. Now, they cut very effectively. All of them. Dewan Summers cuts hard. Jesse Sapp cuts hard. But I think as far as understanding and setting up his cut and making a great cut, that Jonathan Wallace is the best. Wallace holding his jaw and his left ear as he goes to the bench. Jeremiah Rivers comes into the game. And a steal by Dewan Summers. It's like working with us. <laughs> <laughs> now that's both ears. <laughs> Amber couldn't handle the pass that time, and it's pulled down by Biggs for Pittsburgh. Nice look. The excellent fake by Brown. Don't knock it down there. Oh. Pittsburgh struggling from the field, just 3 of 12, not 3 of 13, and it goes out of bounds. But it will remain Pittsburgh's basketball. Uh, and John Thompson's over there with his arms, like, check him out. Get those rebounds. That goes back to what you were saying. Good field goal percentage defense and not stealing the deal. Well, they're great athletes, but even great athletes can't just jump for rebounds. You've got to find somebody and lay a body on someone. Pittsburgh has gone five minutes now without a point. It leads this game by two, eight minutes in. Well, Pittsburgh has become a jump shooting team over the last five minutes. They need to get the ball right there in the middle. That's perfect. Well, they just can't convert a nice offensive rebound. And you give it to Hibbert or Summers. Take your pick. And Blair will go to the line for two. Well, it's been 20 years, but it never gets old. And when we come back, we'll take a look back at one of the great moments in Big East history. And one of the three of us was there. 
Back in Pittsburgh, the Panthers lead Georgetown by two, and it's hard to believe that next week marks the 20th anniversary of one of the great moments in Big East history. Mike Gorman and our own Bill Raftery were there. Right, nobody home. Picked off by Miller. Goals ahead. Lane's on the other wing. Oh! 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 Yeah! Send it in, Jerome! Oh! Just inferior equipment and superior body strength. Uh, never gets old. You know, I was watching that game, and I, I remember thinking, boy, Raftery's on his last legs. <laughs> it looked like... <laughs> You look like we finished that. Oh. By the way, were you in grade school watching that or where were yeah, you? Yeah, I was four years old. But, you know, re reminiscing, it almost, when Jordan did the one from the foul line, that's how far out I thought that was. And as you can yeah. see, it was a little closer to the rim. But he was a strong guy for that time. I think the weight started a little bit later. Uh, what a great team that was. Sean Miller was the point guard and now the... Great coach at Xavier. And how about, how about the Atlantic 10 having three teams in the top 25? Dayton's unbelievable the way they've been winning. Pretty good for a mid-major conference, huh? Yeah, isn't it funny how people label them? Uh, Curtis Aikens here, part of the, as the years went on, Pitt became stronger and stronger. And Jason Matthews, who was a three-point shooter back in those days. And Darrell Porter was a freshman on that team, and he was the last Pittsburgh City League player until uh, Dewan Blair to uh, play at Pittsburgh. Blair grew up actually about 600 yards from the Peterson event center. Amazing, huh? Talk about easy recruiting, saving a budget. See, I'd love to see him with nice back cut here. And Ewing underneath Great. able to spit it home off the glass. Georgetown within one. How about that catch and keeping his feet? Boy, that's really difficult to catch that, not walk, and be able to kiss that off the glass. Hey, you know, Sap really does a nice job making plays, too, but you're, so you're absolutely right on a terrific maneuver under the 10. He had 14 in his last game against Connecticut. Talking about Patrick Ewing Jr. Pittsburgh has now missed nine straight shots from the field as Wanamaker can't hit it. And Hibbert able to clear and get it out to River. You know, Dave, all their shots are challenge shots or contested shots. They haven't gotten anything open. And that's what Georgetown does. They hold you to one challenge shot. That's why their field goal percentage defense is so good. They don't turn you over. They make you take bad ones. The other second in the country in field goal percentage defense. The sack is off the mark with that three. Now don't be in a hurry. I think you got to reverse the ball, make the defense work. You don't want to chuck and duck in the half court set. Georgetown pretty low from three, and that ends a streak of nine straight misses. Tyrell Biggs with the basket for Pittsburgh. Uh, Gilbert Brown shows you a little, another dimension of his game. He can soar with the best of them. Hibbert, oh, nice spin by Roy Hibbert, but he can't put it home. Numbers for Pittsburgh if they hurry, but Georgetown gets back on defense. They need to lock Blair down that low post. Nice. nice. Ewing able to swat it away. Brown tried to beat him off the dribble. A week of impact continues with Super Tuesday and a college basketball doubleheader on ESPN. First at 7 Eastern in the Big Ten, Ohio State and number 11, Michigan State, followed by Kentucky and Mississippi State. Guys, what happened to the Spartans the other day against Iowa? Yeah, it was unbelievable. They just went so cold. 18 points in the first half, 18 in the second, but don't expect that against Ohio State. We got a timeout here in Pittsburgh. The Panthers leading Georgetown by three midway through the first. My Pittsburgh leading by three despite shooting under 24% from the field. Georgetown at 36%. In the opener of Big Monday presented by Bud Light. Kansas up next taking on Oklahoma. Seven of the top ten teams in college basketball will be on the family of networks in this week of impact. Well, Roy Hibbert out right now, David. Uh, Jamie wants to attack them when he's out of the game. There's 15 minutes he's not in, and they do. There isn't that deterrent around the rim. And Macklin replacing Hibbert is on the bench, commits the foul, and Biggs will go to the line with four points already. A great cut by Biggs, a nice catch, and importantly, he went up right away and used that off arm instead of pushing off just to shield and protect the ball away from Macklin's block. Did Mike uh, choose that philosophy when Samson went out of the game? See, <laughs> let's attack with JB. That was a retreat. <laughs> There's that button hook post up that they run. Well, you got to be careful making that pass because DeWan Blair has great feet and great hands. He can step out and steal that. He is gonna, I'm sorry, Dave. 
There's that hands and footwork there. Boy, that was a great denial. A little nickel dimer. Just had that left arm locked down on the hip. And what a great personality, Dewan Blair. He's always smiling. I mean, I bet as a coach, every once in a while you say, you know what, we're going to have a hard practice and wipe that smile off Dewan's <laughs> face. He comes up afterwards smiling, going, boy, that was tough, coach. Uh, he didn't recover there. Just showed big and uh, really didn't get support in the rear. Basket by Vernon Macklin, former McDonald's All-American. Blair with his first foul, second on Pittsburgh. Panthers by three as we near the nine-minute mark in the first half. With Sam Young playing at the four spot off and usually can exploit a matchup with his quickness, but going against Patrick Ewing Jr., that's a tough, that's a tough, tough. A nice denial in the box. Blair, great pass, somehow got it to Biggs. Good hands though by Ewing. Blair on the floor. And finally a whistle, it will go to Georgetown on the possession area. Well, you guys were talking about the fact that Dewan Blair always seems to have a smile on his face. Here he is during the singing of the national anthem, getting into it. <laughs> Boy, that's uh, our guys are working overtime. But part of his success, I think, is his effort. You know, his enthusiasm just expresses itself every time he's on the floor. He's just got a great passion for the game, and he works so hard. And one of the things I love about him, the way he rebounds, he's got great second jump ability, and he keeps the ball alive. Here's Jeremiah Rivers, Father Doc, of course, the head coach of the Boston Celtics. About this time last year, they were starting an 18-game losing streak. Things a little different for the Celtics this year as Vernon Macklin gets his second basket, filling in for Hibbert. I think Doc uh, realizes he's got some talent this year. Yeah, it's amazing how a guy like Kevin Garnett and Ray Allen can make you a better coach automatically, huh? And former Hoya Jeff Green was uh, kind of involved there as he was drafted by Boston and then traded to Seattle. You know, as good as those two are, Hughes is playing great, too. Here's Blair somehow got the handle and a foul before the shot. That's the fourth Georgetown team foul. We are on Ewing as first personal. Sorry, Jim. Yeah, we are back in conference play where there are 18 fist fights to determine who's the best in the Big East. It's going to be a wild year, no question about it. There's that short corner they're attacking. You guys like that fact now they're going to 18 conference games in the Big East? Yes. I think the more conference games you get, the better, especially when you got such a big lead. Because uh, if you're coaching, you wouldn't say that. <laughs> Travel on Tyrell Biggs. Yeah. Kind of the baskets down low, but couldn't get the handle that time. And that's the length that Jay alluded to. I mean, they have big guys, even with Hibbert out. Ewan and Macklin. Eight minute mark here in a low scoring first half. Pittsburgh leading Georgetown by one. Wallace lost it out of bounds. Back in a moment, Panthers lead by one. I'm Reese Davis with your Sports Center 30 at 30 update. LaDainian Tomlinson, the star charger running back. Hyperextended knee, but he does expect to play in the AFC Championship game against the Patriots. Phillip Rivers, with his knee problem, on the other hand, is still listed as questionable. They say he is day-to-day. -day. Andrew Bynum of the Lakers does not expect to play for the next eight weeks. He has an injured knee. MRI test revealed that he had suffered a bone bruise and had injured his kneecap. Sports Center 11 Eastern after Kansas and Oklahoma. Stay current with ESPN News. Hi, Grace. Philip Rivers likes to talk to the crowd as much as Jay and Bill do. Pittsburgh, <laughs> there's Mike Tomlin, the Steelers head coach. Injuries really caught up to them as they lost at home in the opening round of the playoffs to Jacksonville. But good first season, replacing Bill Cower here in the Steel City. Now, Jamie Dixon in his fifth year here at Pittsburgh, and he actually is the all time leader in winning percentage in conference games of Big East history with. John Thompson Jr., that's JT3's dad, number two in that category. Amazing success story. This is dad Jim in from California. Sweetheart of a guy. Georgetown in man to man. Davis does such a good job of keeping his defender behind him. Blair can't score though, and Patrick Hewitt with the rebound. Over people. That would be much better. His numbers much better this season than they were last year, getting more of an opportunity this year. All of Georgetown points have come in the paint. Pittsburgh with a couple of threes in this game, and that's why they've got a one-point lead. And that's a little wrinkle. They had those double screens now. Something they didn't do much of last year. They did it for a while. Back screen, he pops. But they always do it for Wallace, and it's always from the right to the left. 
And Ewing again with great hustle, but stepped on the baseline after the missed three from Austin Freeman. Georgetown 0 for 5 from behind the arc now. And Thompson led Georgetown to its first Final Four last year since 1985. I was down there for the Midnight Madness. What a proud Papa watch it. They had some pretty good recruits in the building, too. They were alive in Washington. How about that punch by Macklin? Blocking the shot. Expectations were very high for Macklin last year as a McDonald's All-American, but he struggled. And John Thompson says it's really because everybody compares him to Hibbert, and he's not the same type of player. Well, he had overcome some skill sessions with Jay Billis. So, <laughs> I mean, that's, uh, <laughs> well, that's the one area where he's got to improve is his overall skill level, but he's made great strides. But they're getting shots at the right spot. Biggs missed twice, but he got fouled the second time. 15 foul on Georgetown, second on Ewing. Georgetown just watched as that shot went up and became spectators on the glass. You can see Blair, nobody gets a hand up. He just turns and shoots, and then watch after he shoots. Everybody just watches instead of finding somebody to box out. And Blair is the guy, uh, excuse me, Biggs is the guy that gets the ball. How easily he caught the ball as well at the elbow. <laughs> Big shooting 61% from the foul line. There's a kid who's toned up his body. And it's him with timeout. I thought he was standing up to go in. The bigs over his last four games has really come in and he's blended in very nicely. He's rebounded. His average of, what, six and a half rebounds a game over his last four. Yeah, had 10 against Seton Hall to go along with eight points. He's got five points tonight. You know, you're talking about Hibbert. He only plays about 25, 26 minutes a game, so this is not unusual that he's been on the bench for several minutes now with Macklin in the game as Biggs hits the second free throw. The coach has such great depth. They do have one issue with depth, and that's Chris Wright, their outstanding freshman shooter and point guard is out indefinitely with a foot issue. Wallace out to Summers. A pretty mystery, but Macklin had the rebound and had it taken away by Blair. Young streaking down court. Mike Tomlin would appreciate that catch, but a blocked shot. No foul call, it will stay. Pittsburgh basketball. Well, they got some good officials at the ground here, but a nice run out. You've got to attack Georgetown before they get set. Pretty athletic catch, unable to finish. I think they got all ball. Yeah, I don't know. Looks like quite a bit of arm, too. Second block before Macklin, six minute mark. A total of 27 points scored in 14 minutes. Oops. And Young stepped on the baseline. A little tough. Well, trying to make a move against the zone off one pass is going to be very, very difficult. And also driving is difficult because you got that center to really block you off if you get by the wingman. And one of the best things you can do is take one hard dribble into a gap and then pass it. Try to make two play one. Pittsburgh with as many turnovers as field goals. Five, but a three-point lead over Georgetown. Well, they've been handling this play very well. Blair, when they pop out on the ball screen, He's been recovering. They're very disciplined. They're staying home and making sure they stay between their man and the basket to be able to bump a cut. What a check out, huh? There with a the rebound off to Dewan Summers miss, and here's Ramon. Run through that pass at the feet of Benjamin. Blair, strong move, and a Georgetown foul. Reversed the ball, got some action on that short corner. Squared up beautifully. It's almost like he did that with his eyes. He was looking over that left shoulder, and the defense just left him. Austin Freeman just left to pick up a cutter, and Blair took advantage of it. Never leave the ball. Austin Freeman, just a freshman out of DeMatha High School, has played very, very well. But that was a mistake. You certainly can't leave the ball in that position as well. Actually gave that foul to Freeman, it looked like. He wasn't even around the ball. 16 foul on Georgetown. First on Freeman. Hibbert back in the game for Georgetown. He gets blocked out that time by Biggs. And then Biggs finds Blair, but he blew the layup. And that's because Hibbert was there. Got real, real, real quick. Didn't finish. Strong. Well, Pittsburgh really working that second slot on offensive rebounds. With that lane moved up a bit, I think it's great for offensive rebounders. There's a double screen. That is one of those plays they like to run again for Wallace. Hit the elbow and then they pass. Hibbert brings it to him. Sap on the drive. Summers baseline. Shot clock inside of 10. Sap got it. First three for Georgetown in the game. This gets a complete package, I think. And when Dewan Summers puts the ball on the floor at 6 8 in athletic, he draws a lot of attention from turn and just pitch it back to Sap. 
who's one of the great glue guys in the country. Good for points per game, leads him in assists. I guess with a name like Saf, you better be a good glue guy. <laughs> Post-rub. This is what I thought I'd see more of, Jake. I like the shot clock. Here comes, this is what they do right oh. the clock. They run a high ball screen. And with one on the timer. Oh! It's a three! Run up! And what a screen by Blair. Get the chiplets to the dentist. And Jonathan Wallace taking a beating tonight. Hibbert posting up on Blair. Got both hooks. Short jumper, good for Freeman. But he is unselfish, Roy. Well, if you let him back in, I do think he's going to pick you apart. He's either going to be able to wheel into the lane and shoot over you, or he's going to find somebody open. But you need to attack him on the dribble. I would. I would. I think he could hurt you there. But you, you also think a little bit worried about giving up open threes, which is where George Johnson really hurt you. That's a foul. And it won't drop. But going to the line will be Sam Young for two free throws with Pittsburgh leading by three. 17 fouls on Georgetown. First three of the game for the Hoyas for Sapman and then Ronald Ramon from outside. And Pitt leads by a three. I'm Reese Davis coming up on the UPS halftime report. We'll tell you who the big man on campus has been so far this season. Sort of a halfway award, if you will. Bigger and Stacey are here to tell you about that. And what about the Chargers in the AFC Championship game? Will they be at full strength? We'll give you the latest on Phillip Rivers and LT. That's all coming up. And also after us tonight from the Big 12, it'll be number three Kansas taking on Oklahoma. A week of impact. On ESPN and ESPN2, Jay, you'll be at the Duke Florida State game. Ref, you'll see Texas Tech, Texas AM. Mm, very impressive early. Jones, DeAndre Jordan. All right, Oklahoma, Kansas after us. That's going to be a great game. Kansas, there's not, I, I think they're as good a team as there is in the country right there with UCLA, North Carolina, and Memphis. And Ohio State, I think Fat Mott has done a magnificent job with that team. You know, the old banquet joke, uh, Bob Knight and I have. A thousand wins together. <laughs> Bob Knight has 900 of them, or he is approaching it. Uh, what a legend in the game. We're getting a, getting a chance to watch the studio with Digger Phelps. We saw former Notre Dame star John Shoemate before the game, who's a very bitter, bitter man after playing for Digger for Wouldn't four you years. Be? <laughs> <laughs> Sam Young misses the second free throw, got one out of two. We saw his numbers, a candidate for most improved player in the Big East, coming off a 28 point game. No free throws yet for Georgetown. In fact, they don't even have an offensive rebound yet. Pitt has 11 in the first half. Uh, Body it up by McGee. This kid, let us see, I would shoot it. Uh, he is unselfish, though. That's a great find. But I punish these big guys if I get that opportunity. Well, they go, I mean, Ray Hibbert, every time he gets the ball in the low post, is just backing his man in. That time it was McGee. But there's nobody they have that can keep him from backing it in one on one. Second assist for Hibbert as he finds Freeman. 21-19 Pittsburgh as we near the two-minute mark here in the first half. 17 fouls against George, only two on Pittsburgh. Shot clock down to six. Ramon hit a three earlier with a shot clock winding down. This time he finds Gilbert Brown for the layup. And again, interesting, the dribble followed by Hibbert took him away from blocking the shot. Here he goes. Everett working on Gary McGee, and McGee commits his first foul, third on the Panthers. You can see the high screen set up top. That means Roy Hibbert is going to be involved, and he's going to have to pick up Ramon. That means that Dewan Summers has to come up and stop him, and that means Gilbert Brown is open on the baseline. When you drive off that high screen, when you involve Roy Hibbert, you're going to get something good if there's not a great rotation. Hibbert, no. Another foul on McGee, his second, fourth on Pittsburgh, and Hibbert will go to the free throw line. And he's going to need Fibber and McGee to guard Hibbert in there. He's going to need some help. McGee, a freshman, not getting a lot of minutes until the South Florida game when they were without Fields and Cook. Won eight straight games without playing and came and played pretty well against South Florida. 
Hibbert hits the first free throw. First free throw of the game for Georgetown. The yeah, ones have struggled this year, guys, at a foul line only 62% last in the conference. Uh, they shot over 70% last year. That's something they're going to have to pick up. But you get the feeling that even though Georgetown is trailing by two, that they're getting drilled here. And they're right there. Georgetown hasn't played particularly well. And Pittsburgh can't get away from it. There's your box set now. Diagonal to the screen in. Get the nice look. They're not making shots, basically. Yeah, but Young had to fade away for that because of Hitler. You know, you got to go straight up and down or give him a shot to go around it. Sapp and Wallace not on the same page there. Georgetown turnover. Now Pittsburgh shooting under 30% from the field right now, but winning by two. We mentioned the fact that Jay will be in Tallahassee for Duke and Florida State. An ACC doubleheader on Wednesday night hoops presented by Staples. North Carolina takes on Georgia Tech in the nightcap. Jay has that one too. You think uh, you think Paul Hewitt at Georgia Tech is talking to his team about transition defense yeah, right now? After watching the state game, huh? And one of the one of the big elements is. That's what Sam Young needs to do. Shot fake, put the ball on the floor, and go straight up and down. He is a good shooter. That's his first field goal of the game, and it comes with just over a minute to go in the first half. Ball screen and slip. Wallace off target from three, but Freeman with the rebound. Get the big fella touch. Oh. Offensive foul on Summers, and that's his third as Blair takes the charge. How smart was he? That's why I think he's, they've got to go to him just a little bit more. Take the stress out of it. And this is just a gorgeous read. Well, I think he got, it was, look, not a not a bad call because it's bang, bang. But I think he slid into him. I don't think he should be taking charges right under the basket. And he wasn't square to the drive. So I think that was a, a questionable call. But a great job by Blair to get over there and lay his body on the line. Benjamin spotting up. Can't hit the three. Rebound for Hibbert. Just on minus seven in rebounding, but they did get their first offensive rebound on their last possession, but they couldn't convert. They do this time in transition as Freeman connects, and Georgetown is down two. Pretty Patrick, good kick. Oh, Patrick Ewing's injured right now. Yeah, I see him out there. Uh, Hibbert with a pretty good kick out pass to get that opportunity basket moving gingerly. Oh, Ewing shaken up. And. Timeout by Pittsburgh. Georgetown 3 0. Best start since the 2000 2001 season. The only unbeaten team left, guys, in Biggie's play, which speaks to the parody in Biggie's conference in 2008. Now Jay had that Memphis game, I think, didn't you? Were you down there? Sure did. At sure noon, did. Noon start. A pretty talented club. One yeah. of the things in the Rutgers game I noticed was the dribble ability of Rutgers, and they didn't convert some shots. And I think Memphis is saying they'll drive, kick, and find some people. Well, Memphis also did a really good job on the offensive glass, and they scored in transition. And it's, it, it's interesting when Memphis puts the ball on the floor, you always have to be aware of them just pitching it up near the rim. And they've got, got Memphis has guys like Joey Dorsey and Sean Tag. I mean, they can just go up and get it and dunk it. Mm -hmm. It's like a set play for them. Uh, looking at Hibbert there, uh, I mentioned I was at that midnight man. I had a chance to talk to him. He's so polished and solid as a guy. He's been on a long run in the bigs. As a lot of these kids are that go to Georgetown. 11 seconds to go in the half. Shot clock off. Here's Ramon with a pull. Mm. Well, he blitz it, but what ability with the bounce. And they're not going to get one off here unless it's going to be a flyer. Wallace from half court. Go! Jonathan Wallace! <laughs> Oh, they're going to look at it, but how about that? You have to defend everything now. I didn't think they had an opportunity when they fumbled it. That's well, how they got off. Yeah. How about that? A little nylon out of Alabama. Take that, Roy Hibbert. The little guys can shoot from further out than the big guys. <laughs> yeah, but I'm two for two, <laughs> Roy says. <laughs> how about that? That is amazing. Well, in a low-scoring game like this, who knows what kind of an impact that three might have on the outcome of this game. 27-26, the score at halftime as we join Reese Davis for the UPS Halftime Report. Step inside the gym door. Jonathan Wall is in range. That's why he's shooting around 47% from behind the arc. He's no Roy Hibbert. 
by percentage, of course, out there, but still pretty good. Glad to have you with us on the UPS Halftime Report. Digger Phelps, Stacey Dales here. One point game at the break. Pitt has the advantage, but you think that maybe the tempo of the game really plays into Georgetown's hand. Yeah, I really believe if you play at the pace, as Digger and I just talked about, so good to be back with Digger and Reese, but mainly Digger. If you play at the pace of this Georgetown team, Georgetown has the advantage because why? They have Roy Hibbert anchoring everything inside defensively. This team leads the country in field goal percent defense. And when he's not in the game, there is a difference. And it was evident at just past the 10 minute mark when Pittsburgh finally got to the basket. I mean, you want Dewan Blair to get to work inside and take it out. And that's what Memphis did. That's what Joey Dorsey did. And Joey Dorsey and Memphis also played faster. Jay Billis just alluded to it. They rebounded, but they also picked up the pace and picked up the tempo. I think you have to take this Georgetown team digger out of its tempo. And Georgetown has taken Sam Young out of his tempo. When you look at what they are and how they play tonight, to me, it's more of where is Sam Young? He had 28 points against Seton Hall. He doesn't get his first field goal to where there's about a minute and 14 seconds to go. He's been quiet, but when he decides to go one and one you have to attack Georgetown. You've got to get the ball to Blair inside and let him go through Hibbert so he can't block it. Once you're aggressive, this is how Pitts had that balance since they lost Cook and Fields because they can get an inside attack on, puts the pressure off the outside shooting, and that's what's been lacking in this first half. The top five field goal defenses in the country. I mean, Young's not just walking and lock and give it to me. Up. I want the ball in the paint. Okay. <laughs> well, he, he hit a shot late in the half. Maybe yeah. get hot in the second half. All he needs a little love to be big man on campus, or perhaps it's another freshman who has been the biggest man on campus thus far this season. These guys will weigh in. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by the new AT&T, your world delivered. Presented by Bud Light. We're in Pittsburgh at the Peterson Event Center. Georgetown trying to stay perfect in conference play. Go to 4 0, but right now trails by one as we look at our Liberty Mutual first half stats. Pittsburgh plus 10 in offensive rebounds. No second chance points for the Hoyas. They did shoot 50% from three in that, uh, from the field rather, in that first half. With Bill Raftery, Jay Billis, I'm Dave Pash. What did you guys think of that first half? Well, Georgetown hung tough. I, I didn't think they played their best, but as you mentioned, they shot 50% from the field. They do need to shut off that offensive glass for mm -hmm. Pittsburgh, and I think they need to start being more aggressive offensively and really take it to Pittsburgh. I want you to go out there and teach these big kids how to put it in the hole. I mean, they've had great opportunities, don't you think? They have. Good shots, shooting 33%. Coach has got them in the right spot. they got to make plays. Jonathan Wallace had a half-court shot that counted at the buzzer to get Georgetown within one. They go to Blair down low in the opening possession and a Georgetown foul. And it's only the first on Roy Hibbert. Actually, they get set, so that's the first on set. Just a little set play to screen block to block and get DeJuan Blair into that low post and Blair at 5.6 boards in the first half all of them hard fought against a very big Georgetown front line especially with Roy Hibbert in the game. Well, Blair's got double doubles in two of his last three games including 20 points 15 rebounds in Pittsburgh's last game against Seton Hall. But just an extraordinary rebounder his ability to offensive rebound especially at 20 rebounds in the garden against Duke. So that's a, a, an incredible number. Seven foot two and three wingspan certainly enhances that. Pittsburgh playing this season without two of its stars at all. Levance Fields could return at the end of February. Mike Cook out for the year with a torn ACL, but Jamie Dixon again has Pittsburgh playing well. And there they got the big guy. Give it to him. Pretty good defense, though. What a recovery by Blair. He has out of bounds by Benjamin. Blair does a great job of moving his feet, and not all big guys do that. He moves his feet to get around in front, doesn't get caught. Look at him move his feet yeah. to get all the way around on the baseline side. You don't find many big guys in college that can do that. Now they're stuck on one side. The defense by Ramon. Wallace got it back. They got to shoot. 
Only one on the timer, and it's a shot clock violation. Well, pretty good ragging of the handler in that trip by Ronald Ramon. Not often that you see Jonathan Wallace turn the ball over. Got to be stronger with it, give a pass fake, and deliver that ball into the post. Now, he had one earlier on the ball screen. Remember, dribble, they trapped him when Jesse Sapp uh, ran past the pass. He's such a solid player, though. Never missed a game in Georgetown. Next walk on recruited by Thompson and Princeton, although John Thompson says that story's old. He actually didn't like the fact that it's tall because he says it doesn't do justice to the fact he thinks Walsh is one of the best guards in the country. Blair too strong with that shot, and then he touched it last. He does have one frailty, though. Uh, he's thinking of law school. We <laughs> <laughs> you know what happens to people that go to law school. <laughs> Yeah, well, they have been accepted already in a George Floyd yeah. Law School. They yeah, look a success of broadcasting. Yeah, you go to law school, you got to sit next to a guy like you. Oh. <laughs> well, you heard some uh, NFL commissioner. That's what Paul Tagliabue did after uh, playing at Georgetown, going to law school there. Summer's missing. Blair couldn't handle it. Neither could Freeman, and he'll go to pick. Uh, he's scrapping for the rebound. You mentioned Tagliabue, but he was a great rebounder, incidentally. Uh, Ewing Patrick surpassed his numbers, but uh, pretty solid guy in the backcourt. Just never makes mistakes, a great demeanor, an outstanding passer. We've talked about his ability to cut, but he's one of those guys that he's just a, a, a great leader on the floor. And he doesn't need the ball to play. Uh, that's true of all these Georgetown guys. They're not volume shooters, they're just winners. There's a, there's a toughness about him when you watch him play. Good Young hands. got it stripped by Summers. It'll stay pit ball 15 to shoot. Did you notice Hibbert there? He's got his hands straight up. But he can move you down low as well. And Sam Young started out on the low block. He wound up over toward the corner. I think the zone was effective for Georgetown. A really stymied pit. Let's see what's effective on the out of bounds. Looking to screen the top. Benjamin for three. In and out. Brown, though, with the rebound. Another offensive rebound for Pittsburgh. That's 12. And Brown gets that running start. He's such a great athlete. Blair couldn't handle the pass. It'll go to Georgetown. Pittsburgh 12 straight wins here at home. They're 90 and 8 all time at the Peterson Event Center. Georgetown has accounted for one of those defeats for Pitt. No team has ever, no opponent has ever won twice here at the peak. Summers Mill batted around, ends up in the hands of Benjamin. Well, Summers can go stronger than that. He's a much better athlete and much stronger finisher than he's shown. Oh, catch and shoot, you gotta play him. Everybody in the league knows he can drill him. Third three for Ramon, he's got 11 points to lead all scorers in the game. Nice defense by Blair to step in front of the pass intended for Hibbert. There's another one. Benjamin. Lead of the night for Pittsburgh, and John Thompson calls timeout. The NCAA women's best thing run to start the second half for Pittsburgh. Back to back threes by Ramon and Benjamin as we go inside the play. And really, two threes in a row hit because of poor transition defense by Georgetown. Everybody runs back. No real sense of urgency. They're in the slot. Nobody fanning out to find shooters. Ronald Ramon knocks down the first one. And the second one, you can see Keith Benjamin gets to the corner. Georgetown, nobody has a hand up. Watch Dewan Summers come out. Unless he's going to block it with his forehead, you got to get a hand up on a shooter. Pittsburgh 5 of 11 now from three. Largest lead of the night for the Panthers is at eight points. Now this seems a grinder though. They will hang. Here's Summers. Way off. He just took off his wristband. Maybe that threw him off a little bit. Well, that was a challenge shot. He tried to make a quick ball fake and put it up. There's Mike Cook and Levance Fields guys out with injury, yet Pittsburgh playing well again. That is a tough-minded group, let me tell you. They know how to win. Mike Cook out with a torn ACL done for the year. LeVance Fields out six to eight weeks with a fractured left foot. Jamie Dixon hopes to have him back for the end of the regular season. Well, they with Georgetown. They don't score in a hurry. And they're a the team that's going to grind you, so Pitt wants to be solid. And I just think Hibbert's got to get a few more touches around the rim to do some damage. 
Rivers with the turnaround for the first points of the half for Georgetown. He really run hard off that screen by Hibbert. I thought Summers could have given him the ball right away. First field goal for Jeremiah Rivers, sophomore from Florida. Ramon, the only player in double figures on either team tonight. Blair banks it in for Pittsburgh. How about that? The empty side, little kiss by the big fella. A little pick and pop, and the rotation by Jesse Sapp just a little bit too slow getting over there. That's an awful lot to ask for Roy Hibbert to step up there and hedge and recover. Pittsburgh doing a great job of involving Roy Hibbert in ball screens, moving him around. And look at this aggressive play at the ball. Young, forcing him deep. Ten, and they haven't done anything yet. Rivers kicks it out. Three won't go for Freeman. And then cleared by Blair. It's here. It's not, he goes after it. Strong. Gets the mitts on it. Better keep him away from Dave Wanstead, the head football coach here yeah. at Pittsburgh. Send it in. Oh. Well, they've got them twisted and turned in the blue shirts, not responding adequately. Sam Young's jam gives Penn its largest lead of the game. There you go. And Hibbert foul. Block is the call on Brown. That's his first and the first on Pittsburgh in the half. Dewan Blair having a fabulous season. He's not the only terrific freshman in college basketball. More on that when we come back to Pittsburgh. Back in Pittsburgh where freshman Dewan Blair has been outstanding again tonight for Pittsburgh. Dewan Blair, an outstanding rebounder, but also very good in the post, backing in Roy Hibbert with the great footwork and a really good finisher, Ben. A great job moving people around, I think, getting them involved in screening situations and also the extra pass. How about this? A little kiss, Jay Bird. In downtown Pittsburgh, there are a few more, though, and you've seen a lot of them. And Dewan Blair, not the only outstanding freshman. Michael Beasley from Kansas State. One of the top rebounders in the country, Eric Gordon, perhaps the top freshman scorer in America, or a pure scorer, O.J. Mayo, playing for Tim Floyd out in Southern Cal. And how about Kevin Love in the game that he had the other day against Washington State? 27 points, hit two threes, 14 rebounds, just dominated that contest. I had a chance to talk to Ben Howland yesterday. He said it was a classic, and they are very excited in town over the play of Kevin Love. How about Washington State? They scored 22 points in the first half, then 21 points in the last 90 it's seconds. Amazing. They had seven threes. Got it as close. I think three is what Ben said. Uh, John now trying to sneak back in this one, and maybe the answer will be touches for the big guy. He gets both free throws to go. Hibbert with five points, five rebounds. Back to the two-three zone for Georgetown. Correction, six points now for Hibbert. Four of four at the line. Oops, Get away with a walk. Yeah, yeah, a little extra step. I think Georgetown needs to do, they gotta get their hands up. Their hands are down, easy to pass it. Wow, what a cut. I know the pass was beautiful, but Ronald Ramon active. When you can shoot the ball and you are active, good things are gonna happen for your club. Pittsburgh 40, Georgetown 30, nearing the 14 minute mark here in the second half. In this kind of a game, 10 points is a pretty good size lead. They go to Hibbert, off with the left hand, out to Young in the rebound. Well, they really concentrate on getting to him. That's much better, I think. He used his left hand. He was almost trying to show off his skill level instead of going hard to the rim. Young goes hard to the rim, and it's a 12-point Pittsburgh lead. The Young and the wrestlers taking it to the tip. Georgetown now absorbing punches. They need to start throwing some. And they kind of did there, Hibbert, with a little elbow, but no call, and Hibbert gets the basket. Uh, Dewan Blair does a good job defensively. He moves his feet. He's strong, but he's got a habit of flopping a little bit. He needs to get rid of that because they're not calling it. And Dave, now this is key for Pitt. They want to shorten the game. They're going to jack him up, use some clock, and get a good one. Brown from the corner. Off the mark from three, and Patrick Ewing, who was shaken up in the first half, back out there now gets the rebound for Georgetown. When the ball goes inside to Hibbert, they need to start cutting off of him if he's not going to make a quick move. 
Nice pass and catch, huh? Oh. Freeman with the score, and Georgetown with an eight. Freeman has eight, and Jamie Dixon calls for time. Now, his dad could never make a pass like that, Patrick. Oh. What a pass. Oh. In order to take that away, you got to put more pressure on the ball. Uh, just clever. I mean, you, you take it away for a while, and then all of a sudden, Dribble at you, back door. Second cutter, back door. Anytime they dribble at you, you got to stay between your man and the bucket. A week of impact continues tomorrow with Super Tuesday, presented by KFC, a college basketball doubleheader. Ohio State, Michigan State, and then Kentucky, Mississippi State at 9 Eastern. Kentucky coming off a big win. Sure Boy. was. It, how would you like to be in practice for Michigan State after the Iowa game? What do you well, think? You, think you, better be, you better be prepared to wear a football helmet and some pads because Tom Izzo not happy with his team's execution or, as they used to say, I'm in favor of it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but that second game, Kentucky, what a great win over Vanderbilt. Mm -hmm. Give those kids a little bit of confidence and extra belief. And they're going up against the Mississippi State team. He's got one of the best guards in the country in Jamont Gordon that you don't hear as much about as you need to. As physical a guard as you will see, too. Big body. But the legal SP, they just have to be patient and relax. It's going to be pretty good once he puts his stamp on it. Excuse me, Dave. Hamered out of the game right now for Georgetown. Blair on the bench for Pittsburgh. Young got Macklin in the year. Macklin had a couple of blocks in the first half. And Young is very proficient using shot fakes. You've got to stay down and wait till he commits before you commit as a defender. Well, they get the ball to the elbow. Didn't finish, but gee, that was awfully impressive offensively. Ramon with three on the shot clock. Oh. That's the second time Ramon has beat the shot clock in the game. Four threes for him. The kid's just a winner. A step into it. Defense tardy. Steady and a winner. His dad, pretty good player, they tell us too, in the Dominican Republic. Taught him everything. And his father, Ricardo, yep, played overseas, and Ramon, not the only Dominican Republic player and player at Pittsburgh, Orlando Antigua, former Pitt Panther, now an assistant here, as that was last touched by Pittsburgh. Ronald Ramon with 16 points to lead all scores. And the Panthers lead by 11 at home over Georgetown. Tonight's game available on ESPN HD presented by Olivia. Definitely a week of impact on the ESPN family of networks in college basketball. Seven of the top ten teams in college basketball will be in action, including number three, Kansas, next against Oklahoma. It's a really enticing matchup, huh? Oh. Andy, Tennessee is a great one. Marquette, Louisville. And Vanderbilt and Tennessee. Tennessee, the only thing they don't really do is rebound. I think they really missed Duke Cruz, who's out with that heart condition, but Vanderbilt and Shane Foster, you leave him alone for one second, he will drill it from 25. How about the Aussie? Not too bad either. AJ Ogilvy, terrific. A very talented guy. I saw Andrew Gaze in Seattle the other night. He was talking about Ogilvy, what an outstanding performer he was over there. Isn't Andrew Gaze like 48 years old now? <laughs> well, we be late. Former Seton Hall Pirate, Macklin with a nice move. He was there with a high school team he brought over to play 10 games. Macklin now with six points off the bench. Georgetown back with a nine. Georgetown, Georgetown really needs to be active in this 2 3 zone. A little better coverage right now. We've been out without Hibbert in the game. They covered it, but what the heck? Smooch it home! 600 yards! He grew up right around the corner. His high school about a mile from here. Blair went to Shenley High School, led him to a state title last year. Now he's leading Pittsburgh. To perhaps a 15 and 2 record. That's if they beat Georgetown here tonight. I think the last great player from Shenley was Kenny Durant, who went to LaSalle. Macklin again playing well, replacing Hibbert for the time being. And Macklin has eight points now. When Macklin is active, that's when he's at his best. Running the floor, blocking shots, rebounding, and finishing around the goal. Back to Matt. Now they're back in the zone. Well, they're just changing the Romo's banning. Well, Ronald Ramon, though, not giving him the open look. Wanamaker, no, and here comes Wallace without an assist in the game. Nice pass. And Crawford fouled from behind by Biggs. Well, the elbow's been on Pittsburgh. I'm sorry, Dave, that elbow has been wide open, Jay, all game long, and right here they react, but how about this? 
as advertised. Huh? That's what the backboard's there for. Putting it right over Vernon Macklin, straight on. You don't see guys banking it straight on from nine feet very often, but Blair's showing the touch. And Tyler Crawford, a senior, has not played a whole lot since starting the season opener a year ago. Ended up with strep throat. He was replaced, never got his job back. Hasn't had a lot of time, but comes into the game in a crucial situation here and knocks down the first free throw with one more coming. And then he's a kid you love to have on your team. He's a spark. He's team oriented. They really respond to his enthusiasm. Well, John Thompson calls him the heart and soul of the team, and he winds up guarding Jonathan Wallace every day in practice. They nicknamed him Bam Bam. He wears Wallace out. And it's a bolt to get George Talent in seven midway through the second half. Georgetown, the only remaining undefeated team in conference play in the Big East at 3-0. Pittsburgh at 2-1. Not like Cincinnati and it starts 3-1 in conference play. Cohen's done a great job. A Took care of Villanova the other day. A lot of confidence coming from that win they had at Louisville. Back to man-to-man -to -man now for Georgetown. Good kick. Blair to Young, and then back inside it goes. Shot clock at six, turnover. Here comes Rivers. He's got Sapp with him. Rivers takes it himself. And the follow by Ewing. Bring it home. How about that? That's what you wonder. That's the spark you used to see with Georgetown. Jamie Dixon responded with the timeout. A lot of blue shirts still in the lanes. And doing it defensively. When they went to the zone and back to the man, they picked up their defensive intensity with a different lineup. Uh, the small lineup, I think, really helped the defense. And right here, uh, maybe a foul on that particular play, but just great hustle, anticipation, athleticism in the open floor. <laughs> and a six to nothing Georgetown run. Indiana's loss, huh? G-Town's game. And he's really improved his game as Patrick Ewing Jr. since coming to Georgetown. A really good corner shooter, athletic, and a team-oriented guy. And Georgetown back within five. Plenty of time left. Nine and a half to go. Don't forget number three, Kansas up next here on ESPN, taking on Oklahoma. Kansas, one of three remaining undefeated teams in college basketball. That includes Carolina. North Carolina plays at Georgia Tech Wednesday. On ESPN in this week of impact. And a tough road task for Jeff Capel and his Sooners, but Blake Griffin is the real thing. And Wallace with great hustle. Ramon missing the three out of the timeout. Here is Wallace. No. Got it out of there by Blair, and Ramon's got it. Jeremiah Rivers done a nice job of pushing the ball up the floor since he's come in. Oh, well, you know the guy's behind you. You've got to think. Ewing didn't think Benjamin was going to be there, but he's able to score anyway. And Georgetown's all the way down three. Eight straight for the Hoyas. Well, Ewing just really lacked a daisy go chain on that play. And this is a lineup for Georgetown. You're certainly not thinking offense when you see this lineup, but this lineup has defended extraordinarily well. Little matchup. Pointing out where to go, who to cover. And look how much more active they are. Moving as the ball moves and moving on the flight of the ball. Remember Roy Hibbert's on the bench, too. Young, too strong. Blair, big time rebound and a Georgetown foul. He set up camp on that weak side, and that's where it hurts not having the big fella in there. Hibbert on the bench, not in foul trouble or anything, just getting the breather. Here in this Big East matchup, opener of Big Monday presented by Bud Light of the Peterson Event Center. Georgetown ranked sixth. Pittsburgh number 16 with Jay Billis, Bill Raftery. I'm Dave Pass. Georgetown at 3-0 is the only undefeated team remaining in conference play in the Big East. Trying to win for the second time at the Peterson Event Center. No opponent has ever won here on two separate occasions as Blair is able to convert the three-point play. You know what's funny about that, Dave? I don't think the players even care about that. I think they care about winning the Big East Championship. I mean, that's always what's at stake when the best teams in the Big East get together is a Big East banner. And a little button hook again, and just a sloppy pass, but a good cut by Macklin. Georgetown, of course, won the Big East regular season and oh! last year. How about Keith Benjamin in a foul? How about that circus delivery going to the left? The only shot he could come up with. It's all about the Benjamins. <laughs> and that's four personals on Dewan Summers. He looked like he was enjoying it himself. How about this? Sweat? Take the hit and just get it up there.
That's the E in horse got right up, there. Got it up with the left hand, no look. It's always nice to get up off the deck and know you're only shooting one free throw. That was huge. So Summers on the bench with four. That's the third team foul on Georgetown. Back to back. Three point plays for Pittsburgh after Georgetown had pulled within three. Mount Vernon toughness. Like the McCrays and the Williams. He's averaging Benjamin is 17 points per game since Fields and Cook went out. Macklin is five for five from the field, 10 points. Yeah, I remember you telling me how impressed you were when you were working with him. I was teasing you before. Well, at great one, he's a great kid, but that, that shows you the, how far his skill level has come. He's a great run and jump athlete, always has been, but really improved his skill level under John Thompson III and the great skill work they do every day in practice. Ooh, that is deep. He won't look at the strength. Blair missed the layup. Rebound for Diggs, and then he's fouled. Pittsburgh dominating the glass throughout this game. That's one of the reasons why the Panthers lead by seven, and perhaps why Roy Hibbert's coming back in the game. Can your car play every song you own? ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Bud Light. Endless refreshment from start to finish. Bud Light keeps it coming. And in part by the stylish 2008 Mercury Milan. Mercury, new doors opened. This past the bottom of the hour time for a Sports Center 30 at 30 update. LaDainian Tomlinson hurt in the victory over the Colts yesterday. Expects to be able to play with the gimpy knee against the Patriots on Sunday. Phillip Rivers, the quarterback, who also left the game with a bad knee, still listed as questionable as the Chargers play for the AFC Championship against New England. Lakers, Andrew Bynum, he's going to miss eight weeks. He, too, with an injured knee. It's Sports Center coming up tonight after Kansas and Oklahoma, and you can always stay current with ESPN News. And, of course, coming up just as soon as we finish in the Big East, we'll move to the Big 12. Here's one of the great freshmen in the country, Blake Griffin from Oklahoma, leading the Sooners against number three, Kansas. It's coming up next. And Dewan Blair with 13 points, nine rebounds here. Reese, the outstanding freshman for Pittsburgh. We'll see a good one next, and some pretty good Jayhawks. Ranked third in the country, one of three unbeatens remaining. Kansas so, has everything. Uh, a couple of the pro guys were saying that a lot of their guys are going to make the league somehow. Oh, yeah. Some bigger factors than others. But the perimeter guys are, are, are it's, and the defensive ability to steal the ball is incredible. I mean, how'd you like to be Russell Robinson on almost any team in the country? Russell Robinson would be the best defensive guard by a mile. And, and, and he's got he's got Mario Chompers right next to him. <laughs> <laughs> and Collins isn't bad either. Sharon comes in. But having Brandon Rush back healthy and aggressive. I mean, he came into that Nebraska game on Saturday night in our primetime game at 19 points. That's the kind of aggressiveness that Bill Self wants to see out of Brandon Rush. And he's going to be a guard in the NBA. Yes. Well, I'll tell you what, he's a heck of a small forward in college, too. They're going to play up. Both teams shooting 50% here in the second half. Scoring is picked up. Pittsburgh leads Georgetown by eight, led 27 26 at halftime. And as we have a foul. That's the third team foul on Pittsburgh, and that's three personals on McGee. Summers is uh, in foul trouble for Georgetown with four. Snap has three for the Hoyas. McGee reminds me of a lineman. You know, the ball is snapped, grabbed the guy, kind of uh, very physical in there. Kind of a UFC move. Hibbert back into the game for Georgetown. Has eight points, but Macklin is the leading scorer for the Hoyas with 10, and here he is with the basketball. Wallace over two Panthers, no. Tough shot. It'll stay Georgetown ball, though. And they're really working on the D to force a guy of that talent with that kind of delivery. I think Wallace penetrated with the idea of dumping it down either to Hibbert or Macklin. They get it inside. Ewing can't score, but he'll go to the line. Hey, what a strong cut by Patrick Ewing Jr. Where was the D though, Jay? Nobody saw him. He just waited till he turned his head and went straight to the ball. Foul on Young is his second. 14 foul on Pittsburgh. Georgetown also with four fouls. You see the timeout situation above the school name. Those yellow dashes representing the timeouts remaining. And only a 63% free throw shooter. And perhaps the Oakland Zoo playing a role in that miss. That's one area where 
Poor free throw shooting really hurts you, and that's on the road. When you step onto the road, you've got to shoot it well from the line if you want to win. The zoo doesn't help either, though. There is some great enthusiasm in this building. That was only the first miss, though, for Georgetown. Coming into tonight, last in the Big East in free throw shooting at 62%. One out of two for Ewing. It's 54, 47 Pittsburgh, 6.52 remaining. Don't lose track of Benjamin and Ronald Ramon now. That's what Georgetown has to concentrate. When they give it up, don't lose it. That's when they get the open looks. Oh, not a good foul. That's on Macklin, his second, fifth on the Hoyles. Pittsburgh can take their time, run some offense, and then call a set if they get down to a late clock, if it gets to 15 or under. Now both these clubs are pretty good late shot clock situations. In particular, Ronald Ramon has got 16 points, and six of them coming on buzzer beaters, leaving the shot clock once in the first half with a three, and then again in the second half. They're just exchanging in the matchup. Young guarded by Hibbert. Where are you going? Young unable to connect. Five on four for Georgetown with Young trailing. Ewing finds an open Jonathan Wallace. Doesn't Short miss. with a three. He doesn't miss those very That was big. Here's Benjamin. He had Blair tucking himself scored anyway. A little hesitation. May have froze the defender. Could have dumped it off as well. Hibbert down low. Ten points now for Roy Hibbert. Just to inhibit Hibbert. Once he gets it that close, you let him set up camp. Got to do your homework a little bit early. Well, you have to beat him down the floor and meet him at the free throw line and bump him off his path. He'll go right back into Blair. Here go, here go. They forgot where he was. Almost got the open look. Ramon does find Blair, and Blair puts it home. 15 points. Well, that's the, Blair. that's the weakness of a closeout lead. All of a sudden, your weight kick takes you forward. You can put it on the deck and find. How about the game Ramon is playing? And Hibbert traveled, trying to go baseline. Roy Hibbert, when he gets the ball, look, he gets right into Blair, and Blair gets on the high side, his high shoulder, he just spins and uses the rim. And a terrific job by Ronald Ramon on the penetration. He had Blair for a post pass, and then decided to drive it, threw Hibbert to him, and dropped it down. Benjamin no oh. rebound for Young, back up, got it blocked by Hibbert. <laughs> Why not bring it out? Well, Hibbert didn't even have to jump. He looked yeah. like Kenny George from UNCF. <laughs> he, he has tiptoe blocks. I've seen a lot of them in his career. I don't know if anybody has the size of chew that George has, size 28. Well, I fell out of my chair when Steve Lavin referenced the Chief from one field of the Cuckoo's Nest. That's the juicy for <laughs> it. <laughs> And a foul on Wallace, too aggressive with Ramon. That's Wallace's second, sixth on Georgetown. Well, our, our guys on the truck said this reminded them of Jay Billis's playing career, how he blocked shots. Oh, it's like playing against your dad in the driveway. <laughs> a chippy toe in negation. Hey, Ronald Ramon has shown just how smart of a player he is. When Jonathan Wallace was leaning in, Ramon just leaned into the contact to pick up the foul. He plays with great pace and great tempo. Just a, a terrific player that has shown his versatility. He was a shooter when Levance Fields was the point guard. Now with Fields out, now he's the point guard and has done a great job of running a team. In a sense, the perfect combo guy, Dave, because he can adjust to positions where he can shoot it. And running the club extraordinarily well. Brown misses the front end of the one and one after the foul on Freeman, which was his second. Nine point Pittsburgh lead, four minutes to go. Where are the points going to come from for the Hoyles? Sap. Unable to hit the three, gets it back though from Hibbert. Good body control, but couldn't make the shot. And eventually the Hoyles do get it in the basket. And a timeout called by John Thompson. Good job by Sap to stay with it.
The wake of impact continues on ESPN with Wednesday Night Hoops presented by Staples, a doubleheader in the ACC. Duke taking on Florida State, followed by number one North Carolina and Georgia Tech. Tar Heels look pretty good on Saturday after that game against NC State. Huh? Anytime you're up 30 at halftime, you got to feel pretty comfortable about your chances to win. But you weren't happy in the studio. I saw you there. You yeah, were... I, I felt NC State had underperformed a tad, but you got to give them a little bit of credit because North Carolina, nobody scores faster than the Tar Heels do. They're so good in transition. And when you've got a workhorse inside like Tyler Hansbro, you know, Roy Williams can fall in his. Uh, Ball in his office, knock his head, go to the beach. Yeah, just just go sit down and watch Tyler Hansbrough go to work. Is there anybody? I know Kansas pushes. Is there anybody faster on a make getting down the floor? No, I don't think there's anybody that scores any faster than North Carolina in college basketball right now. That probably second would be Kansas, but uh, but I think North Carolina scores it faster than Kansas does. Pittsburgh ball with a seven-point lead. And a foul on Hibbert. That's only his first, but the 18 foul on Georgetown. Panthers will have a one and one when we come back, leading at home by seven. Can your well, they're revving it up, standing in line. The students are not yet in school, but they were waiting all day long around the arena to get in to see this matchup. Big Blake Griffin, only a freshman, 6'10". He'll be going up against the likes of Darnell Jackson and two other huge people in the middle for the Kansas Jayhawks. Big 12 Conference home opener for the Jayhawks. It's OU and Kansas coming up next. All right, Ron Franklin here, Pittsburgh, which is led by as many as 12. Right now leads by seven, playing again without Mike Cook to the left there. He's out with a torn ACL for the year. LeVance Fields on the right, expected back at the end of February. And they aren't the only team dealing with injuries in the Big East. Devendorf out for the year for Syracuse. Both Padgett and Palacios are back to Louisville, which looked pretty good last Thursday against West Virginia. Yeah, having those two guys back healthy, David Padgett, his ability to talk in the back end of that zone and direct some traffic and... Yeah, not only Eric Devendorf, but also Andy Routen's out for Syracuse. Routen was injured before the year. season started yeah. when he was playing for Team Canada. A huge blow to that Syracuse team. He, you know, he hurt his knee on a simple back cut. It's amazing. He was on defense that all of a sudden turn. Tough. Benjamin misses the front end. That's two times in the last minute. Pittsburgh has missed the front end of one in one situation Georgetown ball trailing by seven if Georgetown can score here they can really put some game pressure on this Pittsburgh team they've been playing with a little bit of a cushion here's Ewing from way out look at this rebound and finish Everett could not though got it back and he's fouled by Blair uh, not a bad giveaway at that point right Everett struggles on the free throw 54 he keeps that ball so high fundamentally sound you can see him just keeping Blair right under the basket, but never brings the ball down and allows the guard to come in and bother him. Shooting well tonight at the free throw line. Eight of nine now. Is, uh, Georgetown as a team and Hibbert five of five at the free throw line. Freeman to the bench. That was a 15 foul on Pittsburgh, which conversely is eight of 16 at the free throw line as a team. Watch the rotation on this ball when he shoots it. That is perfect. And this is a young man that's been very well schooled at Georgetown. He came in, John Thompson, John Thompson's third dad, Big John, called him affectionately the big stiff. And no longer, though. Yeah, he is no longer that. At the game winning three to beat Connecticut with four seconds left last week, a second career three. There's the shot fake. Sam Young is so good with a shot fake. You have got to stay down. And they ran their set, though, a little shuffle cut, got him to the box. And this is just that uh, they had to switch out. Hibbert had to come out and play him. Very exaggerated shot fake. And Roy Hibbert usually keeps his feet on the floor until the shooter leaves the floor. That time flies right on by. Ball was on Macklin is third. Young gets the free throw. Pittsburgh 9 of 17 as a team at the line as Wallace returns. Along with Freeman and Macklin and Rivers go to the bench for Georgetown. You know, we always say people are athletic. When he was on his recruiting trip, uh, he walked into the gymnastics center and started doing somersaults. And then Jamie was the assistant. What the heck is going on? <laughs> <laughs> and also plays the piano. Yeah, he's going to start playing the dice. That's the play where they spread and dive. 
Sapp, though, can't hit the three. Georgetown struggling from behind the arc. On the night, two of 17. Good little, offensive rebound, a rare one tonight. Good little hedge by Brown now, and hedge. I'm gonna call a foul. And that pass attempt inside. It's a third on Blair, sixth on Pittsburgh. They don't go away. I mean, they, they just, uh, they play like a big time team. And nothing phases them. No. They never change demeanor. They just keep playing. And the small group got him back in. 19 fouls on Georgetown. Six against the Panthers, seven point pit lead, two and a half left. But Pitt does a pretty good job in the passing lanes. You know that? You get Blair with the little body hunt. That's four. If it's on Blair, it is. That's four. Three in a row on Blair. And give Austin Freeman great credit for working on his pass. He got Brown up in the air and was able to deliver it. And just way too much body contact. Blair had his arms around Hibbert, and the referees are going to call that every time. Because he's complaining that Hibbert established that elbow on the shoulder first. 17th also it's a one and one for Hibbert who has not missed from the foul line. Does there. Was six of six but couldn't hit the front end. That was the first time he backed off the line when he shot it. Usually he stays on the line and follows through but he kind of short on that and backed off. Clock your pal at this point. Pittsburgh has led the entire game. Biggest lead was 12. Tip. Yep. Georgetown foul, 10 team foul, so free throws the rest of the way for the Panthers. That's the fourth on Sapp. He and Summers both have four personals for John Thompson's team. Benjamin's amazing. He plays like he's been around, which he has, uh, but a starter for four years, you know. His kid is just a solid, confident performer. Well, he's a man out there. Averaged 11 minutes per game last year. And this is his fifth start tonight with injuries to Fields and Cook. He's played very well, averaging right around 17 points per game over the last five, and he's got 12 tonight. Blair on the bench with four personals. Right now with an eight-point lead, and if Benjamin makes this a nine-point lead, Pittsburgh has got to guard the three-point line. It is one thing to give up a two. It is an entirely different thing to give up an open three. Two minutes to go. Georgetown with the ball, down nine. They've got a pair of timeouts left, as does Pittsburgh. The Hoyos, in case you're wondering, just two of 17 from three. Now two of 18. The miss by Wallace, big time rebound. <laughs> I'll say, was that big? And the challenge on the jumper as well. And a foul by Summers will put Ramon, a 73% free throw shooter on the line for two, third on Wallace. One thing we talked about early in the game, Dave, was Pittsburgh's ability to guard the three-point line. And they have made Georgetown try to beat them with twos. And thus far, with a minute 38, it has staked them out to a comfortable lead, as comfortable as you can be in the Big East. If Pittsburgh hangs on, there will be no more undefeated teams in Big East play. Georgetown came in 3-0, Pittsburgh 2-1 in the conference. Well, you watch Pitt, though. They can guard. They're in the lane. They get their hands. They nudge. They know how to play ball screens. Post defense has been great by Blair. And a season-high 18 points for Ronald Ramon. Failing in here to the injured Levance Fields. A minute and a half remaining, 11-point deficit for the Hoyas. Summers three, no, it's been that count of a night. Hibbert lost it, great play by Benjamin to poke it away. Tough-minded, aren't they? Pittsburgh has to be strong with the ball, run some clock, and then get in a set. A lot of guys can beat you with the bounce. Here comes their five play. Here comes a run out ball screen. Shot clock at eight. Tough shot. Oh, it oh. anyway. Wow. Sticking it. And the largest lead of the night for the Panthers. 13 points over Georgetown. Timeout.
That's his man, and why not? I thought he was stuck here, Jay, but just a little bit of fade, and the bench, the exuberance, and you talked about a kid loving what he's doing. His partner out. Keith Benjamin has been nothing short of magnificent in this game. And an eight nothing Pittsburgh run. Don't forget number three Kansas is in action up next. Big Monday presented by Bud Light the Jayhawks taking on Oklahoma Syracuse in Georgetown next Monday on ESPN. And Syracuse even though Eric Dievendorf and Andy Rodgers are out for the season still have plenty of horses with freshman Dante Green. Paul Harris is having a terrific year. Back to his normal position. And Dietendorf hurts in a sense, you know, because he does a lot of strong things, but they're going to get better, that team. Georgetown needs baskets. Wallace gets the roll. And the hole is apparently not going to fit. Yeah, I, don't, I, I figured they'd be giving it. They're just going to hold it out unless they foul. They're going to foul now. I don't know what they do in the back court. Yeah, if you're going to foul, you have to do it right away. They let 12 seconds or so, maybe more, go off the clock. And I understand trying to get an initial steal, but after that, Unless they're going to bring a trap or a double team, you got to go out and foul. Number six, 18 seconds away from going down. Pittsburgh has won 12 in a row here at home. Looking to go 11 and 0 this season. And how about this kid, Dave? Down the stretch here, last five games, 60, averaging 16 points. Big time stepping up. for three only the third made three in the entire game for Georgetown there's a foul with 9.3 on the clock this is what to get it over there want to call a foul <laughs> but you got to come ready now, this was not the best performance that I've seen Georgetown have but this is a very very good basketball team that can be spot out of losses some good things can happen but anytime you go on the road in the Big East, you have to be, you have to expect that you're going to take a loss against a really good team. So this is not anything that's going to phase Georgetown. And with the way things are going in the Big East this year, if you take care of business at home and maybe steal one or two on the road, you're going to be in pretty good shape. Both these teams played their first two games in conference play on the road, and Pittsburgh goes back to the road after this game with games to Cincinnati, which is not a gimme. I just say, watch that one. You might be able to win this league with four or five losses. That's how competitive it's going to be. And Willem over here coming down the road should be an interesting one. Great night for Ramon, 18 points. And Georgetown will suffer its first loss in Big East play, but great six seconds remaining as a Pittsburgh foul. And this is what the coaches say, why foul him, you know? Jamie Dixon, such a big fan of Ronald Ramon. There's Brandon Knight, former point guard here at Pittsburgh now. Basketball operations director for the Panthers. And Pretty good player. Still leads him in assists. Career-wise. Brother Brevin playing in the NBA with the Clippers. His dad was a great player at Seton Hall. I had him his last year, and then he worked with me for many years. Terrific basketball mind. You can see it in the way the kids play. Well then, the marvel. That's it. Georgetown suffers its first Big East loss. Pittsburgh extends its home winning streak to 13 straight as number six goes down. And the injured Levance Fields loving it as Ronald Ramon stepped in again for the injured Fields with a big night, 18 points. Roy Hibbert had a double-double, 12 points, 10 rebounds, but not enough as the Hoyas fall. Pretty impressive, Dave. Rough night for Jonathan Wallace and company, 12 points for Wallace, but a couple baskets late and you see 91 and 8 that's Pittsburgh's record here at the Peterson Event Center and let's check in with Jay is with Jamie Dixon.
Jamie, not only a, a great game and a great win, but how about your, your guys like Ronald Ramon and Keith Benjamin stepping up and breaking out of roles to be load carriers? Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, we got eight guys. That's what we got, and uh, got no excuses, and uh, put no limitations on these guys. We can be as good as we want to be, and uh, we got better. We're getting better each day. We're getting day better in practice, and uh, Ronald and Keith are obviously a big part of it. Proud of them. Where did the attitude come from of, of you lost two terrific players and two big role players on your team of, hey, listen, we got to move on and we've got to win with what we've got. Well, you know, I talked to a few people and they said, you know, start planning for next year. Coaches I respect, but I said, I, I can go with my gut, go with my heart. We're going to get after it and we're going to get better. We got four freshmen. They're getting better every day. Gary McGee keeps working. You see him work every day when he's not playing. He just, he, he, he's not giving up. So we're going after it and our guys, I'm proud of them and we're going to have a good practice on uh, tomorrow too to get better. Well, congratulations Thank on a great win to the Big East. Dave, back to you. All right, Jay, Pittsburgh now 15 and two, three and one in the Big East Conference after a 69 to 60 win at home over Georgetown. Number three, Kansas and Oklahoma coming up next. First, we'll check in with the Sports Center studio for a quick update. For more post-game coverage on this game, go to ESPN News. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports for Jay Billis, Bill Raftery, and our entire ESPN crew. I'm Dave Pash. Pittsburgh wins it at home, 69-60 over Georgetown. Now let's join Reese Davis in the studio. So long from Pittsburgh. All right, Dave, working our way in just moments to Oklahoma and Kansas in the Big 12. Kansas, one of the three remaining undefeated teams to start backcourt getting set, ready to go. It's Ron Collins, Russell Robinson. Of course, they have Mario Chalmers back there. who have been playing a lot of pressure to opposing teams' offenses. What's impressed you so far the most about Kansas, Stacey? Well, I mean, there's